uh, as we as we as we go through this course, I am extremely ex excited because uh, maybe this is one of the legacies uh, I would leave, not just in this, but even on this earth. When you truly become the leaders that uh, Draka is talking about, and that uh, morals and character uh, will generate a spirit in you that will then guide your leadership style. And remember for us, our leadership, our unit of analysis is the classroom. And that if you become indifferent to your morals and your character, then you are seen your leadership will be buried and you'll have that moral numbness that doesn't prick you, doesn't tell you what you're doing is wrong and therefore you don't manage people well. So those are the things we are discussing. Now, life can feel like a complicated puzzle sometimes with lots of uncertainties and challenges. And uh, each one of us can attest to that. But here's the good news. Jesus tells us in today's passage that he's always with us no matter what. His presence is like a reliable compass guiding us in the right direction as we navigate the twists and turns of life. Uh, this is your permanent companion. Uh, so we normally say, yoke yourself unto Jesus. You know the cows uh, plowing land at home? There is that, those two wooden posts. Uh, you pass the next, your head, the head, between the head and the chest of the cow around the neck. And when they are yoked together, they can't run away. They go in the same direction. So experiencing God's presence isn't just about attending a church, attending church each week or being part of a monthly Bible study group. It's a daily thing. As we consistently draw close to him, he draws near to us. And somebody might ask, how do we uh, draw close to him? Uh, through scripture. Just make sure that every day you are exposed to scripture in one form or another at your individual level. Then the other one is prayer. Constant prayer. And sometimes you don't even have to, to, to say what you want from God. You just groan it in your heart. You groan in your heart. So scripture, prayer, and of course, discipleship, if you have mentors around you. If you have ever had a trustworthy friend who was faithful to work with you in tough times, you know just how invaluable such companionship can be. Uh, in my family, uh, my children and Agnes, they, they know my friends. Uh, my friends are countable. They are, uh, they are four or five. They know that anything happening in dad's home, so-and-so will turn up. Uh, so it is that trustworthy friend. Uh, you are always trusting that if I have a problem or if I'm celebrating, that activity is incomplete without him. And I just want to remind you that Jesus is the greatest and most loving friend we could ever have, guiding, comforting, and giving us strength. It is a tough journey and we have all fallen short of it since 
we or Adam and Eve did what they did in the in the garden. So we 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 then look at this as a journey in everything you do, and you'll be surprised how God will always protect you, will lift you, will amplify you, will flatten your enemies around you because of what we have read in this book, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Um, in his presence, we can find peace. We can find courage and the assurance that we will never be alone. Those of us who support Liverpool know that indeed we never walk alone. But here I'm saying we'll never be alone. Jesus is always with us. So uh, the class, take the words of Matthew 28, 20 to heart. So as we go through life, and, and uh, I, I'm hoping that this is a verse that we have read. Uh, 20 tells us, uh, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always to the close of the age. So as we go through life, remember that Jesus is always there, whether things are going well or not. In the everyday and the extraordinary moments that we have, his presence is our constant. I, I, uh, and this was, this is my parting shot to you, uh, that uh, just know that his presence is our constant. He's with us always, even to the end of the age. And so may we always remember this as uh, individuals, as a class, as a university, in our families, that the Savior who died for us will stay by us. I would like to ask Juliana Magomere to pray for us, please. Thank you so much. Let's believe and pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the word for today, that you will always be with us and that your presence will be with us in everything that we do. I pray, Father, Lord, for us as we start off the class, that you guide us, give us wisdom and understanding as we go through this class. Bless every one of us, even those who are here to join. Bless them. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, Amen. Uh, Today is an interesting class, and this is a day when I really, I really wished we were in a live class because um, I would then make sure, I, or I'll be assured that um, everybody is going where we are supposed to go. But um, we will try our best. Uh, and I would like to share, I would like to share the summarized documents that I'm going to use today. And uh, as I said, we are going to, so what I've done is I've summarized your topics. Uh, I, I got the documents today morning, so I'm still going through the background of the study. Uh, I've done about 10. So by tomorrow, uh, you'll get the feedback from uh, the background of the study. Uh, the statement of the problem, the purpose, and the objectives. And uh, I would like on the onset to comment the 30, I think I got inputs from 32 of you. 
So if you haven't brought your topic, uh, please uh, make sure that this topic is in before tomorrow's class, because tomorrow we also continue. We are supposed to bring up a topic, and, uh, and please listen to me very carefully. I am assuming that uh, each one of us did not did not just have a topic pop up. That each one of us has uh, some area of interest, and that uh, you did look around and uh, searched the papers, the articles around there. Uh, before you gave me your topic. So I've been looking at this, and, and uh, we are, this is us. We are in the we are in the kitchen. So the comments I'm going to make, uh, you should take them very positively. Uh, I've gone through all these topics, and uh, I'm going to go very slowly because uh, I want to harvest many of you. Uh, to to begin to farm up their topics, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, Professor uh, Dr. Mark on the other side is busy uh, looking at those topics and disaggregating them uh, uh, and posting people tentatively, tentatively to their first supervisors. So. Uh, and if you are not in, I would not want to discuss your paper because that would be double effort. So I'm hoping that Boaz is here today, Waruku. Boaz is okay. not there. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, you're there. Okay, I was good. talking and it was on mute. Sorry. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm not talking to Boaz. I'm talking to the 48 I see on the line. Uh, Boa's topic is what you are seeing there, and I hope it is uh, clear. It is the conundrum of education policy change in Kenya, exploring leadership challenges affecting effective implementation since 1981. So, can somebody, or not somebody, all of us, can we quickly tell me how many words is Boaz's topic, if you see it there? How many words is his topic? 15. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. Okay. So I want, and, and this is what I'm teaching. So. I want uh, us to know that the first thing is that uh, you must interrogate your topic such that it does not go beyond. It does not go beyond 15 words. So Boaz is around there. But Boaz, let, let me look at this topic. Just to... Uh, uh, the conundrum of education policy change in Kenya. Um, exploring this, and I don't want to track it because of time, but this was is. Um, let me do that. This is redundant because research is that, exploring. And this applies to everybody else. So that would not make sense there. And then leadership challenges affecting effective this is 
sorry. This is what I what we call in research. You are being anticipatory. You are being anticipatory. And so I would expand that. If I was tracking, I would have said delete. So that topic, the conundrum of education policy change in Kenya, leadership challenges, And the word I would add there was, if I were you, is this one, leadership challenges to implementation. Uh, this, this, since 1981, is what we call a delimitation or the scope. So you don't want to go into the policy development of Kenya before 1981. And so this, we then don't put it in the topic and everybody should be paying attention. We don't put it in the topic. We migrate it into the limitation and delimitation of the study. The limitation, the limitation of the study. And I just want to emphasize something here. Let me stop sharing for a minute. I'm coming back. Uh, because I've seen that's a common, a common mistake I've seen in most of your papers, and I need to deal with it uh, here so that we are we are sure with what we are doing. Uh, and uh, pay attention. Uh, what what we are doing here, I just want to go back to emphasize, because I've seen many of you are um, bringing your delimitation into the topic. And uh, remember what we said. Uh, let me not talk about limitations. I'll come to that later. But remember what we said in our notes about um, just a minute about delimitations. If let me go here. The following are delimitations typical of many research studies. Ex exclusions related to gender differences, exclusions related to socioeconomic backgrounds, absence of concern for the size of whatever, and exclusions related to years training or experience. Here, nine, the 1981 that Boaz has given us is a delimitation and it should not come into your topic. Look here, delimitations are the factors that prevent you from claiming that your findings are true for all people at all times and places. Uh, so I, I want you to note that uh, for a, a quantitative study, these are the factors that limit generalization. For a qualitative study, these are the factors that limit the relevancy of your study to other populations or individuals. So here, other populations will be the challenges of policy development before 1981. So the, the example is that, uh, for example, uh, if you study nurses in Nairobi, you will not be able to extend your results to nurses in Mombasa. 
Uh, I want you to note that when a researcher uses the term delimitation, it means they'll point to how he or she narrowed the study to focus on specific aspects. So you are, you are telling me, Boaz, you're indicating how you will narrow the specific focus of your study by identifying a, pre, a precise type of, not research methodology, but the start of the challenges or the changes that you're looking for. And note that what consideration of a researcher is that the limitations are controlled by you. So Boaz has come with 1981. Don't ask him. He's saying studies before this are not included in my scope. The limitation is the scope. So in some studies, it's common to have a delimitation regarding the size or nature of the group. And here, we have seen his delimitation. Prof? Yes. Just a quick question. So if he says since 1981, I'm just thinking, yeah. what is the uh, the latest that he's going to research up to? Is it up to 2024 or? That he will. Is the going to be, yeah? That he will describe in that chapter one when he's dealing with the limitations and delimitations. Okay. I'm, I'm, by the way, the point I'm making is this. Please don't bring the scope into the topic. There is space for it. So look. Prof, just a quick yeah. one, Prof. Yeah. Mm. Okay, simply, uh, there should be no mentioning of the year in the topic. No. No, no, no. It, you know, this is a year. We're going to meet other topics where I am going to say remove this because you have brought the scope. Many okay. of you are very fond of telling me where the study will be. The learners in, in, in Makweni or in Kilifi or where. You have already brought it into the topic. Some I will pass. Some I have passed. Some I have not. And I'll give you reasons. So the limitations detail all the aspects of, of a study that will not be included. So we will not deal with studies, in this case, on policy changes in Kenya before 1991. This process is, a, is exactly one of walling out those segments that are beyond the scope and purpose of the study. So it's very, very important. And I'll be coming back to this as I pick each one of your topics. So I thought we would use this to, to, to illustrate that. Now, the other one is, uh, is of course, uh, let me share. Uh, uh, I hope, are you seeing this on the screen? Is, has it come? Class, are you there? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so, um, Boaz, I, I, I'm saying this. If I was tracking this for you, I would have said in such like that comment, and uh, I'd be saying in my comment here is. Uh, delete for this is part of the scope yeah i would have done that but i don't want to track but i hope you understand what i'm trying to say i'm so, getting it very clearly thank you prof yeah very good now the the the, the thing i want us to do first of all um, you see, when I do this, 
don't talk of leadership challenges affecting effective. This is why you're going to do the study. So when we get to the study down the line, we will see those challenges that are affecting or affecting the implementation of uh, policies. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So now the words for Boaz have now become 12. And the topic is readable. But I have, I would like to give Boaz five minutes, not more than five minutes, because imagine we have to do the 32 and we must do them today. So can you can you talk to the class boards and tell me what is the background to the problem? Or can you try to explain to me and the class what is your point of discouragement? What is your point of uh, hopelessness? What is your point of strain? Uh, or what is this study all about? Five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Thank you, uh, as uh, you have suggested, and thanks for the preliminary feedback, uh, yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, which I've uh, considered, so that mm -hmm. then we can be talking about the conundrum of education policy change in Kenya, uh, the leadership challenges to implementation. Uh, yeah. I understand why uh, the scoping and all that needs to go uh, to the yeah. delimitation area. So. Um, the, the reason, the background to this is, uh, first, I, I must admit that I've really made uh, references uh, to a number of journals and uh, literature that I was looking at preliminarily. And uh, mm -hmm. because education policy issues in Kenya have really been of uh, interest to me, uh, the problem I have is that uh, more or less uh, every time that there is an attempt to get it right, to formulate a clear education policy, a framework yeah, that yeah. would enable the education to be made better in Kenya, uh, it, uh, it's almost uh, taken like uh, once that has been done, then that is the end of it. And uh, implementation suffers. Uh, and this also happens with the kind of the leadership that we get at every given moment to the extent mm. that uh, even recommendations which have been made by uh, uh, agencies created, you find that some are not implemented, a new one comes in place, make similar or such recommendations. Again, those ones also die. And in the process, we go through this cyclic uh, process of always forming task forces and coming up with the recommendations which uh, perhaps uh, nobody takes time to interrogate and understand them in depth and uh, clearly uh, develop an uh, implementation framework that would be useful. And uh, on that basis, that is why uh, I think, uh, I don't want to get to the delimitation, but why I was copying it from 1981, because uh, you'd realize that a lot more of uh, the work done by uh, the agencies uh, from that period really mm -hmm. uh, tried to help Kenya uh, develop its education system that would enable the learners uh, to interrogate issues there, to develop the skills, uh, develop competencies and, and, and the right uh, values or attitudes but uh, yeah. in the process of implementation, uh, you these things fall off because uh, yeah. somehow uh, the nexus between 
what was proposed, what is being implemented, how it is being implemented, and even taking time to evaluate that the implementation is on course. Uh, I look at uh, part of that being the weaknesses in uh, the responsibility given to those to implement it. So the leadership issues then come in, in my uh, understanding. And so mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at it that uh, this is the time that probably mm -hmm. we need to bring this to a uh, halt. These are more or less of uh, uh, trial and error, trying this and leaving it going to the other and all. So that mm -hmm. then we become very clear that when mm -hmm. we want to develop a clear policy framework for education from the lowest level to the highest level and yes. the issues or the ingredients of what that education would look like are in all the documents that we do have. Then mm. we need to be clear on what exactly should it look like. And so uh, I think part of this problem, okay. sorry? Okay, no, and I'm saying yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, so I'm saying part of that problem I've just summarized within that. I've given, for example, the uh, explicit uh, example pointed out by the COH report of 1999, uh, that actually it is the non-adherence to those clear policy recommendations which mm -hmm. have became, become the problem. And I would also, uh, I'm also looking at then uh, in, in, in the... Uh, what I, I was calling the purpose of this is actually uh, just generating information to enable us first and foremost to understand, even before we talk of a policy change, then uh, yeah. uh, what informs it? What mm. really informs it? And uh, at the, so that at every interval we are talking of having a policy change in education, what really is driving us? And how are the changes to be arrived at? And how are these proposals to be processed within the existing policy channels so that uh, you, we do not keep on going back and forth? Uh, I, I do not want to digress from this, but uh, okay. the first okay. one was a case where parliament talking about something and of course, you saw the ministry also doing so. I think that is part of what I'm trying to say, that uh, how do we process it within the, all the channels? And the rollout mm -hmm. processes, how does it take place? Uh, what, okay. are, what could be the impediments on the path? And how can those be addressed? Uh, because okay. uh, as, you, as I was looking at the literature, you realize that uh, more than 50%, I've not mentioned that on the draft, but from the reading I got, you'll find a number of those recommendations actually die natural death without implementation. Mm -hmm. And so the objectives then that I was setting up there is just also to help us uh, first the investigation on the nature and development of these policies since 1981. And of course, that is uh, from the, the, the part where Professor McKay and the working party really worked on a lot of things there. And then okay. establishing what some of the, the impact of the, the leadership regimes that have been coming and how each time a recommendation is made, how decisions are made to trim them down, for example. And also then to examine impediments uh, that are caused, uh, caused by this uh, uh, certain uh, strategic leadership styles, which somehow oh. I think Part of it could have been erratic and, and a way that does not really help us to achieve uh, the desired result or the implementation of that policy. And then finally, I thought that it would be important to make recommendations on how a stable, predictable, and sustainable education policy drive and implementation can be established in Kenya for the posterity. Right. That, that's to me is how I'm looking at this. Very good, very good. Uh, you have sh overshot by five minutes, so you've done oh, ten. Sorry, of five. sorry, no, but it's okay. Uh, you are you are you are advantage because you are starting off. Um, I I I want the class to look at this. If you look at the synonyms of conundrum, there is. Puzzle, mystery, challenge, pose a problem, riddle, enigma. 
uh, when I looked at the synonyms, I voted that that is the best term we should use there. And uh, so I am sure we shall operationalize that term. So you, you, it is just good to keep looking at this and saying, could I have used challenge? We can't use challenge because leadership challenges. You would have challenge, challenge in a sentence. Uh, we uh, problem, the problem, is it a problem? Uh, we, we are reluctant because we want the study to bring it out, to bring out the problems. Uh, and so uh, I can't use enigma because enigma means then uh, it is not, uh, it, you know, you're not going to give us, uh, you're not going to address the objectives of the study and give us recommendations because it will be an enigma. So I, I, I am content with this term. Now, I am not talking to Boaz, so I hope everybody is paying attention as we move along. So I have uh, I have uh, comments on the background, but if I go to that background and, and, uh, and then the problem statement will not move, you'll see my comments as you move on. Now, uh, Brenda Kinyi Otieno, are you in, in class? Yes, I'm present. So, so Boaz, you, I hope you are getting an indication. Thank that, you, Prof. Uh, Yes. Yeah, this topic we can first of all is researchable. Thank you. And I like the nexus between policy change and leadership because Thank that you. is the heart of the of the course. Thank you. Brenda Akini, uh, a critique of educational leadership in shaping. I found that very interesting. So what I did, I did this, and everybody is uh, look here. Uh I, I, I looked at this and I could not understand a critique of educational leadership in shaping uh, I was trying to understand you uh, but I did not understand so I, I'll be asking you to help me understand. I hope already you have counted the number of words but I I uh, Otieno, I, I looked at this yeah. topic and, and was asking a critique of educational leadership in shaping. Is that is that is that why you're going to do research? You want to critique? And don't answer these questions. I'm just asking you. Uh, so me, I would have this this topic, if I were you, thank God I'm not yeah. you. You, yeah. uh, I would have started there. I would have started there. Policy making and implementation. The case of CBC, it can't be in Nairobi County. CBC is an education system. So this is the case of CBC, this one, uh -huh. in Kenya. Okay. You want to look at policy making and implementation. So you want to see how CBC, the policy was evolved right from Douglas Odiambo and the other people, the piloting, their heroes did on this earth on CBC. So policy making and implementation. The case of CBC, you don't put an acronym in your topic, for heaven's sake. So it is competency-based curriculum in um, Kenya. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. In Kenya. Full stop. And then uh, this Nairobi County will be in the scope, will be uh -huh. in the delimitation chapter. You tell us this study was in Nairobi County and you tell us why. Yeah. But CBC is a curriculum for the Kenyan nation, a case of CBC. I have uh, a paper uh, on the South Africa situation. So uh, please, uh, uh, through Caro, chase me. I want you yeah. to read that paper. And okay. then I'll also give you uh, some work on uh, 
what was done on CBC, some uh, articles. Uh, and uh, then I think you have a researchable topic. But Thank you. remember we are saying the case of, we're not saying a case study of, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You right. are, your topic now is sharp. Now, a critique of educational leadership. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In fact, what you are doing, Brenda, a critique of yeah. education leadership in shaping is you are feeding into Boa's topic. Think about it. Okay. Right? Now, can I'm giving you exactly... And please keep five minutes because I, I must listen to everybody. Uh, can you tell me what is your problem? What 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 is it that is taking you into the field to write a critique? Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, so, no, okay, I'm the one. Yeah. I'm, I'm about to start. So basically, yeah. uh, I'm. Uh, first of all, I want to analyze the role of educational leadership as far as formulation of uh, curriculum based um, competency based curriculum policies and guidelines in Kenya in the specifically Nairobi County is concerned. And uh, this is to assess the one, the effectiveness of educational leadership when it comes to coordination, for instance, uh, engagement within uh, engagements between stakeholders and uh, how they participate in uh, curriculum based, I don't know why I keep saying curriculum, competency based curriculum implementation. Then uh, also secondly, to examine the few challenges in some of the barriers that are faced by the educational leaders in Nairobi County specifically to execute the competency-based curriculum. Uh, also to identify some of the best practices and strategies that would uh, enhance the effectiveness of educational leadership in uh, policy making and implementation as far as uh, competency-based curriculum is concerned. And lastly, to basically provide a few recommendations for policymakers after um, you know, taking a few data um, on the same case and provide uh, recommendation, recommendations to the policymakers, educational leaders, and the other stakeholders to improve the quality and basically the impact of uh, competency-based curriculum implementation. And uh, of course, as I've narrowed down to Nairobi County. So, that's um, okay. uh, my objective to start with. So the problem I'm, I will be trying to um, basically get concerned about is uh, one, um, we all know that uh, CBC was introduced in 2017, a change of curriculum from 844 that took about 32 years. So I want to understand the role that uh, I've lost you. Is it me? Can you hear me? Yes. We lost you. Brenda, we have lost you. We yes. can't hear you, Brenda. I hope the class is listening. Is making an implementation process. What is their role as far as uh, no, uh, that's raised a Brenda, lot of Brenda, 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 Brenda. We lost you. We've not. We've not been with you. Okay. But uh, I hope the class is listening. And Brenda listened very carefully. Uh, yes. You are talking about policy making and implementation. Yeah. That is that that is at that high level. And I want you to listen to me. You are not. You are not going to to get into the sub areas 
of implementation and lose the theme of the topic, which is policy making. In fact, for me, I yeah. thought the struggle for you, the struggle for you uh, is this, just, just one minute, Brenda, and the, the, everybody okay. bear with me. Um, the struggle for you, Brenda, is this one. Um, and perhaps even uh, even uh, our brother Boaz, the struggle for all of you, and there's no problem uh, yeah. in uh, in uh, coming up with uh, with the topics that uh, actually the researchers are looking for almost the same thing, but uh, titled differently and approached different. There's no problem. So I I was looking at this. This is a paper we published recently uh, with the Oxford University and Penn State, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, by a team from Daystar. This is the paper. And uh, look at this. Ambitions racing ahead of capabilities. The politics of a competence-based curriculum in Kenya. That's, and, and Boaz, this is what you are saying. Sometimes we do policies without having adequate research uh, to support that policy change. So look at this. This is a, a team I led from uh, from Daystar, and uh, it has just come up. Rice is a very high level platform of education thinkers in the world. So the text explores the rice. Uh, this is research in uh, education programs, research efforts in several countries focusing on Kenya's education system and the challenges it faces. It discusses the transition from the 844 system to the competency-based curriculum and highlights issues such as teacher training, resource shortages, and disparities between private and public schools. The text also mentions the broader goals of the educational reforms in Kenya, and that is Board's topic. So yeah. be very careful. Uh, uh, and I know, I know, I was a dining hall prefect in Mang, and uh, in Mang, we were uh, air levels. We are, we are served gideri with pineapples. They would have very hot gideri, and then they cut pineapples and they throw them into your gideri. And uh, it, it was very good, but those of us who are dining hall prefects, we used to have the top layer. So as a way, we are the top layer, and I hope I'm communicating. And yet yeah. you have a topic, you have a topic that can sit in policy formulation okay. and subsequent implementation uh -huh. then that is then now visible in the quagmire we are having with CBC. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like you to, to bear that in mind okay. as as we go along. Yeah. So and and the uh, boys, this paper will be interesting for you also. Uh, you can download it and yeah, uh, sure, thank you. Yes, I will. Again. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, so, uh, I think, uh, the Brenda, uh, you see where we are going, yeah, yes, uh, I do. I, I, I have, um, I have some struggles with your your topic and we have agreed we shall shape it that way for the time being yes. we might change it or you and your supervisor mm -hmm. might change it yeah but yes. i want you to move forward i'm saying that this topic okay. is researchable so Thank let you. me let me um share the document we are using uh and this is our document i hope it is no that's not our document uh,
Yeah, it is. So let's go on to, because until we, we, we get a topic farmed up, frozen, and then we can't write an aligned background to the problem or problem statement and by extension, the purpose and the objectives. Cindy Emma. Cindy Emma, analysis of this, this is this is this is what research is all about. Unless you are specific to a certain aspect, uh, I, I don't want to I don't want us to be overzealous, uh, Cindy Emma uh, here. So I don't want us to be too overzealous and uh, start bringing uh, words like analysis of. So this will be implementation of policies. And listen carefully. You don't say in public secondary. No. So this one you would remove. You don't say in public sector, implementation of policies. And uh, I would want you to, to qualify and just say implementation of policies. And uh, here you would qualify and, and uh, perhaps, I'm just suggesting perhaps you would say, uh, you, you, you can say this, implement, implementation of education policies in schools in Kenya, uh, and I would want you to tell me what about policies in schools in Kenya, but I just put there this, and I could be wrong. Uh, you'll clean it up with your supervisor. Uh, challenges, challenges, uh, sorry, challenges, and achievements. You know, you can do that, challenges and achievements. Um, because you are talking of implementation of education policies in schools in Kenya, challenges and achievements. Somebody else would say challenges and um, I was just thinking, why don't we say this? like this, challenges and prospects. Yes. Oh, or why don't we just ignore this and say challenges? Uh, you have already used the word implementation. So me, I, I was thinking, why don't we cut this out here? This, cut this like that. And uh, say educational policies in schools in Kenya and put that word here, implementation challenges, like that. So I'm just shifting around with your topic. Yeah? But uh, what I want Cindy to tell me is what is the import? What is it that is causing you to want to study uh, as educational policies? And you don't talk about in public secondary. No, these, these policies are educational policies. And now you, will, in your scope, in your delimitation, you now tell us, and somebody mute, uh, whatever they are, you can now tell us public school. So go on. Emma, let's go. Sorry, I thank you. Thank you, Prof. Who is that? Uh, somebody. That's wow. Dr. Stati was forgotten to mute. Wow. I know he's a PhD. Just not yeah, it is saying it's actually talking. Okay, 
Okay, I'll check, Prof. You can proceed on a check. Yeah, oh. carry on, Cindy. In uh, three minutes, three minutes, Cindy. Okay. What is uh, this all about? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Prof. Cindy, are you yes, there? Um, yes, I'm here, but the host keeps muting me. Yeah. Yes, I hope I, I'm, I'm fine now. Sorry, Cindy, you are close to 30, so I muted you instead of 30. It's okay. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay. All, All right. right. Um, thank you. Thank you, Prof, for this. Um, I appreciate first because, as I said yesterday, I've been looking for a way of shaping this topic. It has given me sleepless, sleepless nights. So at least yeah. I have a, I have an idea of how I can place it better. All right. Uh, so um, all schools are under the Ministry of Education, and uh, I understand that the, the policies, the education policies, cut across. And uh, when I look at some schools in the country, I've seen several schools where I do not understand why the learners do not have classrooms. I do not understand why there are no enough teachers in the school. Um, we have all seen like uh, some of the schools making uh, making highlights in the in the on social media on TVs that we have learners who do not have classroom classrooms literally, or you have classrooms which do not have roofs. So personally, what is disturbing me is the fact that. There are policies which govern all the schools in Kenya. Yet we have such learners who are literally suffering and we have the ministry which should take care of all the learners in the country. And so my question is, what are the bare minimums when it comes to the resources, infrastructure in schools? How are these policies implemented to make sure that there is effective teaching and learning in the school? Because at the end of the day, to realize that uh, this kind of situation will subject students to ineffective learning and at, the, uh, at long last it affects the society at large because these are the learners who are going out to the society and they are supposed to help in solving some of the problems in the society. But why are the schools not having enough resources? Why are the learners learning under trees? Where are, those, where are there so many challenges in some schools, yet when you go in to other schools, you find that schools are well-developed. They have enough resources. They have labs. They have teachers who, they have enough teachers to cater for the needs of all the students. So why the disparities? So that is my question. So my problem is the fact that we have students who are receiving ineffective learning and teaching simply because of the lack of enough resources or in that inadequate resources and facilities. Yeah, um, I am I, I'm hearing you, but I am getting a little nervous because of uh, the, the, the topic is going everywhere. I don't know how you're going to study it. It is going everywhere. So it is too too broad. Uh, and uh, and therefore presents challenges uh, for somebody to to understand. For example, I, I could be very nasty and ask, which is your dependent? variable, which is your dependent variable. And when you are talking about implementation of policies and you go, um, you go look at all the policies in education, we must narrow this down to a certain aspect that we are looking for. So um, the topic the topic is not quite specific. And I hope I'm provoking you 
enough. Yeah. Go yes, on, go I on. I wanted I I I wanted to ask. Can I narrow it down to hundred percent transition mm. in basic Policy. education? Yes, the hundred yes. percent transition. Yes, implementation challenges. Yes, you get it. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, I am I'm, I am very happy that you have picked that up, and I would like uh, I would like. Uh, the, the class, we are coming back. I hope you are with us, uh, the rest of the class. But uh, I would like to challenge uh, us to narrow our topics, to narrow our topics. In fact, that's why I was pushing Cindy to narrow her topic so that we can... Um, we can have a specific area and we are not trying to, 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 to go everywhere. Now, look at this. Uh, I'm trying to, to share something else with you. Look at this. Uh, I hope it will come through. Yeah, uh, I hope you can. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, now look, and, and uh, this is not Cindy, it is all of us. Uh, look at this, I can't, I can't blow this up the way I wanted, but uh, I just want to use this. One effective way to establish the importance of a problem is to cite statistics indicating its prevalence. So Cindy, I, I, I almost jumped out of my skin when you said the 100% transition. You see, since you are introducing your research in the context of a literature, it is important to focus your reader's attention on the main areas that your study will address. That's why I quickly understood Boaz's topic because he had narrowed it down. And now, Cindy, you're doing the same. For example, if your research examines, just listen to this, if your research examines childhood obesity among six and 12 year olds in the United States, the first sentence in figure one is too broad and global. Example two shows an improved version that identifies a population of interest, children between six and 12, and limits the scope to the US. You will limit your scope to Kenya, for example. Now look here, look at the beginning of the research. This is too broad. If you say ob obesity is a major public health concern in all industrial nations and is an important, is an important threat to the well-being of millions worldwide, rates of obesity range from blah, blah, blah. You can quickly narrow this, and this goes to everybody else. Look at what they have done, this person has done in the next example. Childhood obesity is a major public health concern in the United States. You see this one was talking of obesity is a major, like you now you're talking of education policies, but I'm saying which area are we focusing on? Where do you want to focus on? Now you have said 100% transition. And then it says, where rates of ob obesity for children 6 to 12 years of age have been estimated to range from. So you can see the value of statistics in the value of dates, the value of a measurable index to reduce your scope. Otherwise, you find it Two, two amorphous, and we shall have a problem uh, in, in, in going where we want to go. So that's something I wanted to, to share with the class, and, and I hope that uh, we are able to see what I am trying to, to bring across. So let me share this. Prof. Yes. Would you please end it, mine, because I've changed. <laughs> Hmm? Topic. Could you edit my the list? Because I've changed the topic to 
Wizard. Cindy. Oh, oh, sorry, no, Yeah. sorry. Two hundred I was reading. percent transition So, in so can percentage. you read me your topic? Hmm. Okay, I'm open to your correction. I've just written hundred percent transition in basic education in Kenya, implementation challenges. Yeah. Wonderful. You don't have to say education policy. The 100% policy uh, implementation. Implementation challenges. Right? Yes, thank you. Faith. Prof, if you don't mind, as you, you help them reshape their topics, it, it, it will be their responsibility to write them down and resend them so that uh, we have their new topics so that uh, because Yeah. you're not recording down ourselves. Okay. Faith Nzuki. Faith, Yes, are you I am back? Prof. Yes. Yeah. I, I looked at look look at this topic, leadership styles and their effects on school culture and student performance in Kenyan secondary schools, Machakos County. I don't know. Uh I know Nzuki, you come from Machakos, but you don't you don't glorify Machakos just by planting it there. Uh, that's on a light note. But I, I was just wondering, leadership styles and their effects. Yeah, I, I, I was worried about that. First of all, this is just bad English. This is bad English. So this one, I, I, I removed it immediately. So uh, what are we saying? Leadership styles... Uh, what are we trying to say? I was just wondering. And uh, I was wondering whether if you say this effect of, I'm just wondering, effect of leadership styles, uh, I don't even want you to use styles, leadership style on, now this thing of school culture and student performance, Yeah. Uh, effect of leadership style on school culture and student performance uh, in Kenyan secondary schools. I don't know whether it is in secondary schools in Kenya. I don't know. I stand to be... Uh, in secondary schools in Kenya, like that, in Kenya, and that becomes a full stop, then with uh, a lot of pain, I'm saying take that Machakos into the scope. Yeah? Yes. Yes, and all of you in a, as a class, I want us to have a certain universality in our topic. Of course, I know there are places we shall give if there are case studies, but I want us to have some universality. I don't want to hear things like in Sabatia sub-county, in Machakos County, in what, what, what. That one we shall, there's no harm. You're, you're just telling me your study will be done there and we can scope it out there. Uh, and particularly, you are talking of leadership style on school culture and, and student performance. And me, I would not even use the word uh, student performance. I would, I would also be tempted, and uh, you'll have to argue with your supervisor, I would be tempted to remove that uh, school culture and performance. if you want maybe academic performance, but you know, performance has many aspects. So it's better to leave it open in secondary schools in Kenya. Uh, Faith, what is it that you want to tell us? What are you telling us? Okay. My concern was about the performance, basically the performance in secondary schools, whereby you find that most of the times, I don't know, it is parents, teachers tend to follow a certain principle. When he goes to a certain school, 
people tend to, if you have another child or simply you want to transfer and follow that principle, maybe because wherever he goes, there is always a good performance. And you find that even, not even in national school, but even in county schools, you, they try even to make sure that they, be, they beat these big schools with these principles. So I was wondering the leadership styles and what happens. He goes there, he changes the culture of the school in academic performance, and in one or two years, they shoot. And the, the I, for lack of a better word, the... I don't know. When these principals go there, they go with the praise, the word so that you, you was you, looking so, for. The so praise. Faith, are you also going yes. to chase after this? Are you going to chase after <laughs> these principles, or you're just going to sample and then we look at the leadership style of the different types of principles, and then our findings would indicate that uh uh a transformative somebody who has transformative tendencies and you know what they are uh uh somebody who sets high expect, expect, expectations inspires gives support uh is motivational their results yeah. are better right is that what you're saying yes so i we're wanted not, we're, not, we're not going to chase good principles no, we want to look at their leadership styles. I was looking mm -hmm. at the transformational and transactional and democratic types okay. of leadership. And then I compare them and look what is this that they use so that they can so do the in same. Our, in, our, in our interview schedules, we'll have all those and they'll be telling us to, either the teachers will be telling us what type of a principle they have or we'll see it in uh, his relationship with the students, what students feel about it about him then we shall conclude i'll give you you i'll give you an article on um, uh, the the relationship between emotional intelligence and school performance mm -hmm. okay so and, and now the other thing i want to advise as we move because of time we are not moving as fast as i thought effect of leadership style on school wellness the, the the word is school wellness. It covers all these things. Okay. Yes. And we will operationalize the word the word school wellness in our, our operational definitions in chapter one. And school wellness will include performance, uh, 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 what we call comprehensive education, uh, uh, motivated staff and students. All those. Yes. So the topic yes. then then comes to effect mm -hmm. of leadership style on school wellness in high schools in Kenya. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we will still change it when I say we, you and your supervisor, but uh, that's the way I would like it to go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, Francis Ochana, is it Ochana? Or they mistyped you. They, they didn't type your name. You there? They they missed an N <laughs> on yeah. on channel. Yes. On channel. Yes, my okay. name is no. My name my name is not written actually. Yeah, but we also encourage Prof as they okay. speak to you. It will be nice to have their videos on so they can look into your face as you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't worry. I watch what to to for mine, we are getting into deep in the mind. They do know them. Um, I looked at your topic, and by the way, just give me a minute, uh, just to to to. You see this um, this uh, is it faith topic. Remind me, faith or uh, Dr. Marker. I wanted to show them this this article research that I did, but later on. Now, Francis. I looked at your topic, quality education and academic performance among students in selected public schools in Wajia. Do you know quality education and academic performance? Uh, quality education, 
is has a totally different meaning. Yeah, the quality education and academic performance among students in selected public schools in Wajia. So I had a problem with that quality education that I had a problem with that and academic performance. And this academic performance is not among camels. Is it, a, is it a camels or sheep or goats or what? Huh? Francis? It is among students. Yeah, but is it, I mean, this academic performance is about who? Yeah, it's about who? It is um, yeah, so, about so, 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 so that is redundant. I'm trying to say, nice. it is, if you are talking about quality education and academic performance in selected public schools in Wajia County, Kenya, I have no problem. Uh, I, I'm, I've removed among students because I'm saying it is implied. Are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. Because it is quality education and academic performance in selected public schools. Surely there must be students you're talking about, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I have really, I, 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 I want to hear, and I hope the class is listening. I am so, I'm excited about this study, but this study is about, um, it is about this causality. Uh, this study is about causality, and therefore this study, I hope you know, is uh, quantitative, quantitative. Yeah. Yes. yes. It is quantitative. So I am asking you, do you know, first of all, do you know that um, this study, and I don't want answers, do you know that this study will involve measuring variables? And so you must operationalize what you mean by quality education. Quality education. And uh, because of that, you are saying there is a relationship. There is a relationship between quality education and academic performance. Obviously, there are theories established here. There are formulas established here where the quality is measured, the academic output is measured, and now you establish the causality by either doing a regression analysis or establishing the t-test factor or the f-statistic factor for this study. So Mimi Sinashida, and I was very excited when I saw this. I hope that uh, you will know where you're going. I want people to understand why I'm allowing Wajia County in the topic, because it is in selected public schools in Wajia County, Kenya. And, and now when he gets to the delimitation, he will tell me what was the criteria for the selection. How did you, how did you get to have your sample uh, from which your data was collected. I'd also be interested, when I saw among students, then I was free because I knew that the population would be large, quantitative. Francis, tell us what, what is going through your mind about this study. Okay, thank you very much, Professor. First of all, my name uh, is written uh, incorrectly. It is Frank. Frank. It is Frank. Yeah, Frank. France or because Frank? We have, we have Frank. We have another Francis there. So mine is Frank. Okay. So, first of all, uh, 
this uh, in this county of Wajia, we have been having a problem whereby uh, most of our learners are not uh, performing well compared to other areas, compared to other areas. So therefore, most of our schools, even the schools that are national schools, they are not giving out good results. So I, uh, according to me, I thought that uh, there was need to check on what was happening about it. Therefore, I decided to look maybe on the fact that on the level or the quality of education. Mm. If the quality of education has a relationship maybe with the academic performance. Therefore, on these issues of quality education, I, I was going to focus on, on the area of uh, maybe looking at uh, inadequate teachers. But when you check in other schools, in the bigger school, you may find that they have enough teachers. So when you go to a, another different school, you find that uh, they don't have enough teachers. Some schools are well equipped, they have resources, but others do not have. So I, that one led me to think that uh, when I check on the quality of education, it will affect uh, the level of academic performance. There, then I was thinking that maybe I can use mixed method, I embed, whereby I am going to do some of the, to do some of, uh, to do some of the interviews. So I wanted to embed quantitative, to embed with qual. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was uh, my idea. Okay. Yeah. So so. You know, I don't like the word quality education. It is amorphous. Uh, I'm, I'm agonizing. Uh, but uh, if, if I was supervising you, I would have picked a construct in leadership, like instructional leadership. You know, instructional leadership will ensure uh, uh, learning materials are available, will ensure infrastructure, will ensure uh, completion of the syllabus on time, will ensure evaluation, exams are done, and will ensure an environment that supports concentration on learning. So I, I am encouraging you to run away from the word quality education and go into instructional leadership, which relates to the things that you have just talked about. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so yes. Just, just think about it. By the way, these are just suggestions. You, When you are with your supervisor, you can throw them away. But the faster you, you firm up a topic, the better. If by today... You walk out of this class and you're saying, this is where I'll be. And now you, you assemble uh, journal articles on instructional leadership and academic performance. Uh, you'd be surprised. It might be in the US, it might be in South Africa, it might be in, in Ghana. But now you, you adapt it to Wajia itself. It will be interesting the type of tool you'll adapt. And I find that topic, you know, quite exciting uh, to, to me because I, I see many things going on there. Yeah, good. Jimmy Sanyo, are you in class? Yes, Prof, I'm in class. Okay, very good. Jimmy, uh, I looked at your topic. So, so Franz, uh, no, Frank, I hope you're not feeling hollow. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. It's I'm fine. Not, I hope I've not sent you to committee. Hmm? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. I look now, for the uh, Jimmy, assessing the efficacy of education policies in mitigating uh, in mitigating I had a problem with that. This, I had a problem with that. Big problem. 
um, in mitigating. Uh, and uh, I thought you'd just say, as the efficacy of education policies on huh, truancy yes. in secondary schools in Kenya, for example. I, 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 I keep saying I want you to be universal. Uh, and uh, we want this work, when you, when you finish with it and you publish an article out of it, somebody in South Korea or in Australia would be interested. Uh, even this one of Wajia would be interested because we have put Kenya there. But uh, when you say the efficacy of education policies on truancy in secondary schools in Kenya, I like this truancy, having been a high school principal myself. Um, but which are these education policies, assessing the efficacy of education policies on truancy. Um, I, I don't know whether I would be assessing, I don't know whether I would be assessing, but you can educate me. But um, maybe you want to do this, Evaluating, maybe. And uh, somebody might say, but what's the difference, a hero? What's the difference between evaluating and, uh, and this? You see, evaluating subsumes assessing, appraising, gauging, weighing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So maybe the efficacy of... Uh, I don't want to call it education policies. Um, could we, I don't know whether we would say this, and uh, this, uh, if, if, you, if you don't believe in it, uh, don't take it up. Could we say this? evaluating the efficacy of discipline-related education policies on truancy in, I wouldn't even, I will just say in schools in Kenya, then I'll go and scope uh, and say I'm dealing with secondary schools, right? Yeah. If I do that, then I see this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? Yes, Prof. Yeah, so, and, and I like this. Some of you don't understand. I, I really like this. An aspect of truancy, an, an aspect of teenage, teen smoking, an aspect of uh, drugs. But, but I'm, I'm wondering, how you are going to establish the efficacy. I think you're, but first of all, just tell me, what is it that you're trying to say here? Okay, thank you, Prof. Uh, I was actually torn, and uh, I was actually, it was a tall order uh, deciding on the term to, to start with. That is assessing, that's, that word assessing was uh, actually a thing that was, uh, uh, an issue. Before I arrived at the same word, it was it had taken quite some, some bit of time. But thank you because of, you've actually uh, replaced it with evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue here is truancy, of course, which is uh, absence of students or learners in school mm -hmm. without authority. Mm -hmm. And uh, education being an equalizer uh, in Kenya and uh, the Kenya, the government of Kenya has tried its best to ensure that education is equitable and remains accessible to, to all the parties that you have in Kenya, that is to its uh, citizens. But uh, no wonder it has taken its, uh, the initiative of uh, a number of them, quite a number of them, to ensure that we have students in school, 
those who, who face issues to do with school fees, uh, those from very humble backgrounds, the orphans and all that, the government of Kenya has actually ensured that uh, those children are found in school. That is why we talk of uh, the free day secondary education, uh, the capitation, that is the capitation by the government of Kenya through the Ministry of Education is actually giving every student in secondary school around 22,000 shillings per, per year. Uh, but despite uh, the initiative of the government to ensure that we have children in school, we still have children uh, for fating learning, students simply sconding and ensuring that uh, they are not in school. Uh, my reference is actually in uh, under Basic Education Act 2013, Part four that outlines the the, the actually the the regulation that uh, actually outlines the regulations that will uh, ensure that we have we have learners in school uh, and part of it mentions about the guardians and uh, the parents whereby uh, through that particular guideline that is a policy twenty the basic education uh, act twenty thirteen uh, parents mm. can be sanctioned. Uh, or rather can be asked to explain why they're still keeping their children at home instead of uh, taking them to school. Uh, despite uh, having the Basic Education Act 2013 in place, we still have uh, children uh, children at home. Others, in fact, uh, in uh, where I teach, I actually teach in Narrow County, and you will find that uh, when schools open, there are no students in school up to around week two. And uh, to make the matter worse, uh, the, the same learners are neither in school and they are not at home. So parents could not uh, cannot explain the reason as to, uh, 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 cannot account for their children because they are neither at home or neither mm -hmm. at school. At the same time, the teachers cannot account for their for the same children because they are not in school. Uh, mm -hmm. So despite having such uh, the guidelines, the policy in place, but we still have a lot of gaps. Truancy is still a problem in, mm -hmm. okay. in school. Okay. So, yeah. okay, the issue mm -hmm. is, uh, I'm finishing, Prof. Uh, yeah. One of the issues could be uh, there are no policies, suitable policies, or the policies in place could be having gaps, or there's a problem with implementation of the same of the same policies. So the, my study will simply try to evaluate the efficacy of the, of the same policies that have been uh, documented. Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's, it's a researchable area. It's a researchable area. I know we will have to re refine this topic. I like the word efficacy. Uh, it's, uh, it's in the language register of uh, uh, educational research. So I like that, but uh, think about it, right? Thank you, uh, Justin Kasamani. Yes, I'm here, Prof. Yeah, I, I, I have. Uh, first of all, effects of learning resources to comprehensive CBC. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, I, I almost, I was having uh, lunch with the chancellor in my house when I was looking at this, and uh, I almost choked. Karibu kiazi kini kizibe kizibe umio wangu. So, effects of learning resources to comprehensive CBC schools. Uh, first of all, help me understand what this topic is all about. And I, I, I so that I had a problem with that word. I have a problem with this all this in Sabatia sub-county, uh, Vihiga County, you know, uh, and so on. Uh, I had issues. And you can see why this is different from this one, selected public schools in Wajia County. I, I, I was having a problem. I, I don't get the topic, and uh, that should worry you. I don't get the topic. So so can you tell me what is it that you are trying 
to to engage with, with the research. And if not, then I will have to uh, interest you. I have a rough idea of where you want to go, but I am not uh, I am not convinced. And then all of you, no acronyms, no acronyms in your titles. Please don't do that. Okay, let's go, Josephine. Okay, thank you, Prof. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the comprehensive, uh, uh, the competency-based curriculum mm -hmm. being in place, mm -hmm. we have uh, issues of uh, learning resources. So mm -hmm. uh, the learning resources are not uh, available to both teachers and uh, learners. And uh, no, that is what I'm asking, Josephine. Yes. Help me the understand. Okay. Nowadays, it is called comprehensive. I learned from uh, my neighboring uh, primary school that. Uh, yeah, yeah it is... I agree. I agree. But just listen, listen first because I want to direct you okay. to some new thinking. Effects of learning resources to comprehensive CBC schools. Forget about, let's assume this, this, the rest of this is not there. Okay. What, what is your study intending to, to say? Leave that. Suppose that was your topic. Adam. I want to find out the, the impact or to find, to show the impact of uh, learning resources they are not available they are not availed uh, to these uh, schools so i want to see or, uh, mm. because um, they are not there so uh, we have issues with um, with the learning process mm. So, still uh, okay, I am in a secondary school, but uh, we host the primary school in our labs. They are mm. using our labs and uh, the, the material, the resources. So um, apparently, the only resources that are available in schools are the books. And the course, the course books and the textbooks. So um, I know that uh, teachers are having a problem in uh, in uh, trying to expose these learners to the competency based curriculum, and there may be maybe it is because they are using the local available material. And uh, which is not uh, effective to give the information that they need to give. Then uh, we also have uh, issues with uh, with uh, the okay the material. The material goes way from. Uh, the books goes away from the lab uh, yeah, implement, uh, implements or uh, the, the lab uh, materials. Then uh, we also have issues with uh, the teachers. So I don't know whether I can put them in as learning resources. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, 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 I'm listening to you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm listening. Okay. Uh, uh... Then, um, okay. With this information, at least I will have to inform the policy makers to be able to provide enough learning resources. Okay. Okay, okay. I, I want you to I want you to look at this and tell me whether this actually 
topics you are, are, are you talking about the influence of uh, instructional materials or what what are you talking about? You are exactly uh, you've exactly read my mind. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh uh I, I I'm hoping that you're trying to talk about uh sorry, I'm I'm hoping that you're trying to talk about the influence of uh, instructional materials mm -hmm. um, in the implementation of, uh, uh, if you want to decorate it and call it uh, comprehensive, whatever that means, uh, they can call it anything they want, but uh, the point is that uh, if you don't have the materials, then you're not getting to where you're supposed to go. So the influence of instructional materials in the implementation of the CBC curriculum in rural schools in Kenya, for example, are, are you are you arguing? You know, these these are the variables that determine successful implementation. Uh, either instructional leadership of the head and the teachers, or uh, the instructional materials, uh, uh, parental engagement. And so on and so forth. So, I, I, I just, I'm just saying, I don't like, I don't like your topic as it stands now. Okay. So, can you think of that? Yeah. Yeah, but I think I, I haven't taken you away from your idea. You see, that's what I'm trying to, to be kind about. I don't want to. You just say, but this man took away, took me away from my my idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank mm. you. Mm. I don't know why you used Sabatia there. Are you are you trying to bribe me because I come from Sabatia? I don't know. <laughs> no. No, I think so. Yeah. Juliana Magomere, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Prof. Yeah, and please, everybody, be patient. You are learning. You, even if we have, we have done with your topic, there is still learning going on as we discuss this. Now, um, factors affecting the implementation of sexual health project. Which one is this one? Sexual health projects. Which one is this one? I don't know. I, I and just take note of them. Utajaribu kunifundisha because is uh, in public schools in Kiambu County. That's very interesting. Factors affecting the implementation. Is this, are you talking about uh, sex education? He's or, talking about comprehensive sex education. Hmm. So factors affecting the implementation of, come again. Comprehensive sex education, reproductive health. health. Mm. Yeah, I, I just I'm so reluctant to use that word comprehensive because it itself is a problem. Now you want to add comprehensive, uh, if if, the, if it helps your psyche. But for me, it's not you. I'm saying the people are saying we should add comprehensive. I don't know what they mean, but. Uh, so, so I was thinking, why don't we just talk about, uh, for example, the implementation of sex health? Are they called projects? Mm. Hmm? Yes, reproductive health project, yes. In public schools? Yes. Yes. So so you're going to public schools in Kiambu County? Yes. I I I, I would I'm hoping that you are you are supervisor will spend some time. Note that I've removed what you had written, the factors affecting, eh? mm. yeah, yes. 
Yes. I'm talking about the implementation of sex health projects, and I'm feeling nervous because I don't understand it myself in public schools. And uh, suppose I did this, would I be a case for Madare? Um, if I am, then you tell me. If I did this, if I did mm. this, uh, and you tell me, um, like that, what what would I be saying? What would I be saying? Mm. Suppose I say that uh, the implementation of sexual health projects in public schools, uh, maybe I can even say in Kenya, or we can be silent, but let me put that in Kenya, then Kiambu can come in the delimitation, right? Mm -hmm. Reality or myth? What, what am I saying? Is it practical or is it just on paper? Maybe. So, so you're going to find out how much of this is going on, mm. isn't it? Yes. And uh, if it is not going on, why? Yeah. How much you evil? Evil. Uh, so uh, I've just put in some madness mm. to 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 challenge you a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. But tell me again, mm. why are you doing this study? Yes, so it's from a point of where there is little attention given on uh, reproductive health needs, especially for the youth, the, the adolescents, mm -hmm. uh, the, the secondary school going children. Mm -hmm. And yes, this is the group that is that is at a high risk of illness related to sex and even death from early um, mm -hmm. pregnancy related risks right. and complications. And then okay. we have the issue of now LGBTQ that is coming up and it's yeah. really rampant in the high schools, especially in the boarding high schools. So I'm thinking about what what are what are the health uh, the policies maybe okay. around that sexual reproductive health and are they working? Are schools being helped to implement them and how far is that? Yes. So uh, I've seen my colleague Dr. Kigode, you want to Come in, please jump in. Yes, Prof. I just yeah. want to weigh in in that discussion. Eh? Please do. Yeah, please and I've just, I've, I've just posted on the chat a question for the student. Is there a policy framework? Because sex, uh, sex or reproductive health rights, uh, whatever discussions, have been merged with a lot of controversy in this country up to when we are talking now. So I wanted to ask uh, that uh, the student to comment on this. Is there a policy framework in this country for the implementation of the same in schools? Because that is where we, I think we need to begin. Yeah. Whether there exists a policy framework. Because uh, if, there, if there is no policy framework, then uh, I think we could be wedding into a tricky ground, from my okay. view. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Kegode was uh, my chairman when I was the vice chancellor in Moi. He was the chairman of WASU, the staff union. Very, very strong, <laughs> very strong union. So I always call him chairman. Uh, but um, Julian, can we can you tell us? Uh, can you uh, assure us? Yeah, I haven't heard of any. Actually, that was my 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 point of doing the study because I don't see any policies around that. Schools struggle at some point. Yeah. So so you see, uh, mm. I know you've not had time, but all of you, can you go and do intensive breeding around your area? Uh, so far. Uh, um, Prof, uh, can I come in around that? Because I'm also yeah. doing something around it. Yes, come. Yes. Um, 
uh, to answer this, uh, we have had a problem with uh, comprehensive sexual education being introduced in schools because uh, the government has said that uh, as I said, that it's a very expensive affair, and it's also in uh, introducing our West, Western cultures to our children. But then, if you look at it, you find out that uh, what they mean is uh, that they're, they're talking about LGBTQ, something that's already uh, in. Um, it's already like the kids are already in it. So, um, one of the things that uh, most NGOs are pushing is just for the government to introduce age appropriate sexual comprehensive sexual education so that it includes both girls and boys because um, most NGOs only uh, have girls like they only train girls on sexual health but they leave out the boys so and it's not all the girls it's just a section so it leaves out uh, the other girls and the boys and also mm -hmm. I, um, the education system does not really train them about uh, mo much about sexual health. It only trains about re reproductive system and just talks about uh, talks little about uh, safer sex practices. So, yes, mm -hmm. that's I think that is. But we don't have any frameworks around it. And the government has um, refused to implement it, implement it in schools. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, um, Lea Ongaya, are you there? Yes, also, Prof. Aluch, I'm just a minute, Oluoch Madiang, uh, his hands up. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Uh, my apologies first if my background is a bit noisy. I just wanted to help out and say that indeed there exists quite a number of policies from which one can draw um, the conversations uh, mm -hmm. based on Dr. Kegode's uh, question. So mm -hmm. we have the education sector policy on HIV um, and AIDS, uh, several editions. We have the national guidelines on provision of youth-friendly services. We have uh, education sector policy, HIV and AIDS, second uh, edition. Um, then we have the National Adolescent Sexual and Reproductive Health Policy. So, so and, and this span the period 2005 up to around 2015. I mm. do hear Tathleen because uh, currently, of course, there are quite some conversations and probably the owner of that um, uh, study topic might be interested in the fact that the Homer Bay member of parliament, uh, Honorable Kaluma, is pushing for an anti-LGBTQ uh, policy, which will also affect uh, comprehensive sexuality education in uh, schools. Uh, okay. I just wanted to throw that out. Uh, if it is helpful, Asante. Thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, Lea, uh, are you in class? Uh, Prof, I'm in. Mm. So I uh, had okay. No, sorry, I'm, Prof. Before you go ahead, mm. I had revised my topic and resubmitted mm. it yesterday. So mm. uh, okay, so we don't discuss this one. Okay. Okay. It must be somewhere. So that's okay. No problem. Uh, Meshak Sindani, are you in class? Yeah, Prof. I'm in. Yeah, uh, Sindani, uh, the disconnect between policy and practice, identifying and addressing uh, needs of uh, gifted, addressing and identifying and addressing the needs. I I removed that and said a ah, case of yeah a case of gifted and talented learners in public schools in public primary schools in Nairobi Kenya um the disconnect between 
So I also was courageous, and I don't know how you feel about this. Uh, Sindani, I was courageous uh, and removed this and said policy versus policy versus, and, and uh, you can put that in, uh, policy versus practice, a case of gifted and talented learners in public primary schools in Kenya. I really like this study, uh, if we can pin it right. Uh, uh, I hope we shall be able to pin it right, uh, because this is an area where you know that the very gifted and talented learners in Kenya, uh, some of them have seeped through the cracks. And uh, some have, uh, are the ones who are most truant, they are, they are bored in classrooms and so on. So yes, I, I thought this is, this is a very interesting area, uh, policy versus practice. Um, and you can let us know, go and explore that area and let us know what uh, what can be done. So I've looked at, in fact, because of the interest I have in the topic, I, I, I did look at your objectives and you'll be getting my feedback uh, on this uh, when you get your paper back. But uh, researchable, although I, I, I looked at your objectives, um, Meshak, and uh, yeah. you you are not quite then. Uh, let me just read them. The first one: examine the disparity between current policies, such as Basic Education Act and competency based competency based curriculum. That's not a policy. And their actual implementation in recognizing the meeting the requirements of gifted and. Uh, that objective is not smart. It is it is a paragraph. Uh, so I I didn't know what you're saying. I thought you should have what you should have done is first of all uh, your first objective is to establish uh, the demographics and existing policies. Then your second objective assess the efficiency of existing identification techniques and support systems, your, your, your objectives don't, don't water the topic. Analyze and suggest strategies for customized interventions. Uh, you know, analyze should be a, an objective on its own and your suggestions, another objective. So, but I, I want you to, what you need to do is read around this area. And then uh, we can then begin to see how do we uh, position the topic. But I think you are trying to say policy not translated into practice can be a big disadvantage to gifted and talented learners. You know that uh, the people who are physically disabled and so on and so forth are, are are rescued, but a gifted and talented learner might not, and they just go through the system or crack through. Uh, I mean, seep through the cracks, and and, and we don't get them. Uh, Molin, no. By the way, tell me, Sindano, what Sindani, what what are you looking for? By the way, I could be assuming. Oh, Prof. Good evening. Mm. Yes, good evening. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. So thank you for the for the amendment and and, and suggestion. I, I appreciate that. So my, mm. my topic was inspired by a report that I read. This report was done by the Kenya Institute of Special Education. Uh, it's a needs assessment report on giftedness and talentedness in Kenya. So in this report, uh, they try to recognize that there is high level of awareness among stakeholders 
including institutions and everyone involved, that there are gifted and talented learners. At the same time, I came across another policy scan that was mm -hmm. done by the PAL Network, People's Action for Learning Network, mm -hmm. uh, in response to the basic education curriculum framework principles, where they mm -hmm. identified one of the one of the gaps that exist in the CBC principles is how the needs of gifted and talented learners are taken care of, considering gifted and talented learners are classified in the same category as people with special needs. So, and the major, my major interest was, are there any formal assessment tools uh, that are used to identify them. Because currently we use observation, mm. uh, others use academic assessments. Of mm. course, we've had a lot of, the media is doing recognition and that's one of the ways we are able to, to know about them. But at school level, are there any formal assessment uh, tools that can be used uh, mm. to be able to place them? And again, at the Basic Education Act of 2013, has made a provision for the creation of academic institutions that mm. cater for gifted and talented learners. Uh, I haven't done enough such, but I do not know of any institution, to the best of my knowledge, that is created by government to specifically cater mm. for gifted and talented learners at, at the point they are recognized. So okay. that is the... That, is, that was my thinking when I was crafting this topic. Yeah, I think uh, uh, suffice to say, this is researchable. It will give us some freshness. Uh, but uh, whoever Carol allocates you for your supervisor, we need to give you many articles. And I'd really be interested to see where this study is going. This study is very similar to the one on truancy uh, areas that are virgin and also uh, you know boys I, I wanted to send you to the slaughterhouse and and was wondering why you would not do a meta-analysis of uh, policy evolution in, in Kenya or something like that there's something but anyway I'll come later to, to discuss these things with you Molin Anyango, are you there? Yes, Professor. Yeah, I look at this topic. Everybody in the class, uh, I can see we are about 55. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. That is a novel for a topic. <laughs> and I, I couldn't understand. I really, I felt I felt so, so ignorant. I couldn't understand. And that's why I'm happy you're online to explain to me. But this is what I did uh, all the same. Exploring perspectives of teachers, parents, students in the integration of learners with the special needs. I I removed that. Yeah. And this is just integration of learners. Uh, integration of learners. Um, this is what I thought. Integration of learners with special needs and we, we don't say, uh, my dear, we don't say within regular schools. Uh, we, we, that's what it is uh, in the context. So I also was tempted to do this. I was tempted to do this. I was tempted to remove that. Uh, integration of learners with special needs, uh, of course, it must be in schools in the context uh, and stop screaming here in the context or i don't know why you're capitalizing this but in the context of cbc and you don't say implementation no 
just in the context of CBC, and you could say in selected schools in Kisumu County. Have you seen how this topic has, 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 has been sharpened? Yes. Yeah. Easy to think in, I know you love them. You can tell us. That's what you'll be talking to us in your literature, Uko. But do you know what? I love this topic. Integration of learners with special needs in the context of the competency-based curricula, which calls for a practical application. So tell me, what is your what is your agony? What is sending in this area? Yes, thank you for the correction. Now that you uh, left the part that I'm so much interested in, um, maybe I would say that uh, I really feel that the the um, views, the beliefs and uh, challenges um, that uh, on inclusive education, inclusive education is something that has been talked um, about mm. for some time in this country. And um, we, I, I, as I was looking at it, I was um, actually inspired by some survey that was done on children with disabilities and mm. uh, special needs education in 2018. Mm. And um, one of uh, their findings was that the parents um, that have children with disability preferred having their children in uh, special schools rather than being integrated in the um, nearby schools, uh, regular schools for that matter, because from uh, my finding also, I found out that most of these special schools are located in urban centers, which is mm. um, disadvantageous to those students in some of most areas country. Mm. So I was um I wanted to find out why um what uh the views of these parents why would they prefer um having their students or children in special schools when we have other options if other things are done well then we can actually have them in regular schools that is near uh, their parents because we realize that some of them um, have challenges that uh, requires um, some more attention that would be provided by uh, maybe physicians, okay. therapists, okay. and so on. Yeah. So okay. I wanted also to find out what teachers, especially in regular schools, think about the idea of yeah. having uh, children with special needs uh, yeah, so those those are those are now you tease out those into your objectives, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just affirming that this this is such researchable, but uh, you and your supervisor will still need to struggle with that topic. Uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, and uh, we have tried to thin it out as shown. Ngunzi, I need to move a little faster because everybody wants some feedback. Ngunzi. Yes. Yes. Um, exploring the experiences of women. Uh, I, 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 I don't know why you want, but that is what research is all about. So uh, what I did, I removed this. I removed that and said women in educational leadership roles. So I, 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 this exploring the experiences and all that, that is the research itself, right? 
Yes. Yes. And then I I I and allow me to move a little faster. I when you say a qualitative case study of secondary schools in Makweni sub country county, um I don't know why you are you are you are qualifying this because this 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 one will be in your problem statement so uh, you will tell us this uh, and and when you say a case study of secondary schools be very careful it must be a case study of selected schools selected secondary schools in uh, Makweni sub county, then you can use it in your in your topic, right? Yeah. But what do you want? What 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 is what is your pain of your point of pain, or your point of distress, or your point of um, uh, agony, or um, uh, what 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 is a, what is it about women in education leadership? And I wouldn't so, put, I just look, I wouldn't even put their roles. And uh, and I wouldn't use education because you're going to secondary schools. Yeah? So yes. in, in school leadership. Are we together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So uh, what I'm aiming in my study is to investigate the experience the to, ex, to investigate the experiences of women the, the women heading schools in select in selected secondary schools in Makweni sub county and explore the possible strategies that may be applied to improve the women's participation in school leadership in those schools. Uh, have you listened to yourself, what you have just said? It is not making sense. Come again. So for my study, I'm aiming at investigating the the role played by women in school leadership in the, in secondary schools in Makweni sub county mm. and also to integrate the the strategies that may be applied to improve their their participation in leadership of these said schools mm. their participation their effectiveness or what are you saying Participation, participation hmm. in the education. Uh, you want more women in, in leadership? Or what, what are you saying? Yeah. I, I thought, you know, I thought when I read your topic, maybe I'm wrong then. Exploring the experiences of women in education leadership roles. And I have said women in school leadership. A case study of school principals. What, what is it that you are, you are, you are bringing out? And I, I don't even want answers. I want you to, to begin to see. I am wondering what type of objectives you are going to set out if this is your topic. That's all I'm saying. So we must be very clear what what when you say enhanced participation that has nothing to do with the uh, Makweni that is uh, maybe policy uh, issues up there in Teacher Service Commission and Ministry of Education. But uh, I thought you are going to look at uh, women in school leadership and maybe compare. Uh, Principles, women principles, performance, and that of uh, uh, men, and bring out some certain features 
and maybe there are now tools to measure the EQ, the emotional intelligence of leaders. Some some interesting study. Otherwise, this is this is too broad. This is I'm not I'm not getting uh, what we are going to study. So just bear that in mind. Walk with that in mind that this top this this topic needs further refining. Yvonne Gaki, are you there? Yes, Prof, I'm here. And and uh, you know, I, I I just looked at the topic, and you said exploring inclusive learning and teaching practices. Help me understand. Okay. Uh, the whole aspect of uh, this topic, mainly it's being able to include our learners with an aspect of disabilities. And actually, uh, what perturbs me mainly, even as a teacher, it's the scope in which we have the diverse disabilities in this sense. We have the physically challenged uh, that we can actually identify, they are to name the blind, deaf, then we have the autistic who tend to have probably the down uh, and, and also the down syndrome sorry who tend to have the physical and the behavioral uh, disability now my concern is narrowed down to what we call the learning disorders which mainly are a blend of the academic and behavioral difficulties which are not physically defined for example things to do with dyslexia dysgraphia ADHD, but a few because we tend to see that these students are within our class setups. You cannot tell out whether they have a challenge, which you would, uh, which I would refer to here as a learning disorder. They do not exhibit that per se when you look at them. But later on, when you engage them academically, that's when you notice the gap. Now, uh, th the other thing is. Uh, which, which is going to be part of my study and, and being able to come up with all that is looking at it that for the uh, years that I have taught, I've, I've been working in the British curriculum and I have seen the gap in this sense. We will have learning support being provided to the autistic, um, to the Down syndrome, but now these other students, and you can actually tell, for example, dyslexia, the child is smart, if given a scribe, they can actually score very well in the school. However, that is not the case because this learning uh, support is not provided to them. Uh, Prof, I made a few calls here and there just to know that is it just unique in, with the students that I teach and most of them coming from a particular community, uh, even from the Kenyan system. Uh, the feedback, which probably I'm going to be able to do in the research, uh, as I research further is, do they even exist? Because uh, in, in my background study, the question and some bits that you're looking at is, do they even exist? Does dyslexia exist among these students and being able to address all that particular bit? Now, also coming out, it's the whole bit about um, the awareness about it, even for us as teachers, how we able to include them in the in the learning and just not just leaving them out even as we pay focus we, we, we pay focus to the other students okay uh, you know I am so I am so excited uh, the key uh, but you know that that topic you have put there is so broad one cannot understand what is it that you're going to study can we narrow down this topic? That's a very interesting area uh, that we can we can do a very strong thesis. Uh, if we narrow down, you see, if if I just read that topic, exploring inclusive learning and teaching practices, it is so broad that I would not know uh, that you're going to talk about unique disabilities that are hard to detect. And therefore, how do you ensure that, uh, that these kids actually get 
to be supported. So I read your two objectives to analyze the factors hindering the implementation of inclusive process for learners with learning disabilities. It is so broad. In fact, it hasn't brought me home. And I was just thinking, who are these learners with disabilities? Of course, I saw it when I read part of your background to the problem. And then objective number two, to establish the coping strategies on challenges facing implementation of inclusive learning practices and how teachers would be supported in developing inclusive teaching practices through professional development. Oh my, that's a whole paragraph for an objective. Objectives must be smart, uh, specific, measurable, all the time. And uh, and 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 uh, these these objectives don't at all speak to what you have just said. So what I'm saying is that uh, can you can you narrow that topic down and send it to me on email? Just send me the topic because this is an area where we can we can enrich. And even when you go on to your PhD, are you? In, uh, what did you do at under, undergraduate? I did the education, English, and literature. Yeah. So as you go on, you can specialize in that area for your PhD in leadership and uh, policy studies. Thank you, Prof. Sawa. OK, let's move on very quickly. Uh, Taslin, no, Teresa Wakoli, are you, are you in this session, yes. Teresa? Yes, Prof, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, I, I have just a few com The impact of this is a beautiful area of study. The impact of domiciling. What is JSS? Junior Secondary School. Oh, me, I thought it was Jumbo Sana Sana. <laughs> was, yeah. yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then you are squeezed in here, CBC. I don't know why you're putting there in brackets, but I wouldn't even put it there myself because uh, once you mention junior secondary, we know where you are. The impact of domiciling. I wouldn't even talk about impact, my dear. I'll be talking about the outcome. Okay. Yeah. Yes. The, the the impact is far down the line. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, and uh, I, 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 this is a national problem. So it's a point of distress for many parents. Uh, uh, and I wouldn't say the impact. Uh, um, I would perhaps say assessing assessing uh, the effect, assessing the effect uh, of domiciling junior secondary schools in primary schools. No, at primary school level on the quality of education, right? Yes. But uh, can I hear your thinking? Okay, Prof. Thank mm. you. Thank you for the correction on the topic. Mm. Um, my frustration here is uh, why primary school, uh, where there was already a problem with the CBC curriculum implementation uh, due to lack of resources. There was already a lack of uh, proper resources to facilitate CBC learning. Mm. So uh, domiciling JSS is even worse because uh, junior secondary, their syllabus, and their mm. learning areas are more comprehensive and most of the learning areas are covering content in the secondary school. So because there was already a, a lack of uh, infrastructure and resources needed, it would have been mm. better to even domicile uh, JSS in secondary schools whereby uh, there's labs, there's art rooms to support visual arts. Uh, and there's also teachers who are acquitted with enough knowledge uh, mm. in regard to the syllabus coverage. Yeah, that's my frustration. But uh, what is the problem, my dear? 
What is the problem? Is the students are not able to. Okay, uh, the student the students are not able to access um, proper knowledge. That, They're not. That is not the problem. That is the manifestation of the problem. Yeah, okay. that's the manifestation of the problem. So what is the problem? You are going to assess the effect of domiciling. So what, what is the effect? Okay, there are no teachers, qualified teachers, there are no facilities. That are, so so what's the, if this trend is allowed to continue? The so what the question. Student, the students are coming out with lack of skills the 21st century skills that are needed by the CBC curriculum. Yeah, so so the consequences is that uh, it will impact on the attainment of Vision 2030 for this country. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the, the social fabric and the worth of education to a nation, the economic, the social and economic worth of education to the nation. I am saying this is researchable. I want you with your supervisor to package this more sharply as we move forward. Thank you, Prof. Taslin Otieno. Is Taslin on the line? Yes, I'm present. Yeah. I, yes, I, I am. I, yes, yeah. Uh, comprehensive sexual education I, I don't want to, to to interfere with that. You all seem to be very excited about the word comprehensive. Uh, and then a path to mitigating sexual and reproductive health crisis among adolescents in Homa Bay. You know, it's as if this thing is, is just domiciled. So this is what I had said. First of all, Comprehensive sexual education, if you are listening. I am. And its influence on sexual behavior among adolescents in Kenya. I repeat, sexual education and its influence on sexual behavior among adolescents in Kenya. Then you can scope Homa Bay, Ukondani. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So this, this crisis and what, it will come out, in fact, I, I, I supervised a PhD, Obi, uh, was doing this uh, sexual education and adolescence and uh, the communication, how they get the information. So that that, that should be your approach uh, to this. But uh, what is what is in what is distressing you about this? Um, um, I just uh, wanted to find out or look at ways uh, of encouraging the government to introduce it in schools. Because uh, it has um uh, uh CSOs have done it and it has whatever they do shows that it reduces number of uh cases of teenage pregnancies HIV prevalence and even reduction of uh retrogressive cultural behaviors like FGM. So those are the things that I want to look at to encourage the government to introduce comprehensive sexual sexuality education in schools. So, so you, you, you are suggest to encourage the government. Oh, and look at the impact, like uh, what it does to uh, the students or the adolescents. But, but how are you going to overcome this? Because this, this then, Taslin, would be a longitudinal study. Those who have received it and those who have not received it, and then you observe them. Or how are you going to do I it? I was thinking mm. of uh, engaging students uh, who have uh, received it from CSOs and th those who have not received it at all. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll wish you well with your supervisor. But again, this is uh, 
uh, contemporary, so it's it's researchable. Uh, but I have uh, when I when uh, Taslim, you know, the advantage uh, is that uh, uh, I have the papers I have read through. Uh, and uh, your objectives don't say what you're telling me now. Because I don't have my laptop with me. Hmm? I don't have my laptop with me. I, so I'm just thinking in that area. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, have, a, I have a problem uh, with uh, your objectives. Uh -huh. I'm looking at them. By the way, I want to commend most of you who are now used to giving references. I, uh, by, I am also very delighted that uh, uh, all of you have tried to construct a problem statement that uh, aligns to the template we learned. There's a big effort at that, and that, that encourages me. You see, your objectives here are this. The study aimed at determining if the introduction of comprehensive sexual education in schools will significantly reduce HIV AIDS prevalence and teenage pregnancy among adolescents. This is a longitudinal study. You can't do this from a post-sectional study. Uh, then, uh, to convince the government, which platform, to introduce comprehensive sexual education in schools, uh, lay strategies for the acceptance, propose modalities that will uh, allow for the introduction. So with your supervisor, after you see my feedback, you uh -huh. you need to pass that topic. Okay. All right? Yes, thank you. Okay, Tosnini. Uh, but all of you feel encouraged because you have tried to do something. Sarangachi, are you present. There? Yes, yeah. Prof. Uh, don't start by telling us impact of. So I removed that. Adaptive leadership in community support. I mean, on community support in public primary schools. I thought this is just in Kenya. But let, let me understand. What are you talking about? Uh, I was looking at uh, challenges that many schools are facing. What, what is adaptive leadership? It sounds very... <laughs> yeah, what is, what is adaptive leadership? Help me understand. Um, adaptive, lever, adaptive lever leadership, I was looking at mm. it... Something being friendly. How, how, how can community be friendly to the leadership of school. Mm -hmm. Adaptive. Come again. Adaptive, I, I was looking at it in line of uh, uh, I don't know mm -hmm. how to put it. Mm. This is this is it is so broad. Oh. Adaptive leadership on community support. Sarah, we I'm trying to have you rethink this topic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. And uh, certainly it's not coming through. Uh, Ruth, um, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Yeah. You don't say implementation of, so I removed that. It is leadership styles. I don't know that it is styles. I wouldn't say styles myself. Okay. Uh, so it will be leadership style and its influence. Mm -hmm. to improve and its influence. 
Okay. On quality education. Again, I, I don't like that. Can you can you pick a type of style? Uh, I want to use transformational. Yeah. So you state transformational leadership. Let's not let's not be too broad. Yeah. 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 Some other people can do instructional, others transformational, others transactional, others transcendental, uh, and then quality of education. What is this? On um, I don't, you can't, it is so big, yeah, on uh, what, what is, what is this transformation leadership? Uh, and uh, its influence on performance, academic performance or on the wellness in schools. And then in the scope, you'll tell us which schools, where, right? Okay. So this, this, this topic, again, too broad, is not sharpened, it's not, it's not focused. So we're going to have a lot of problems when you talk of leadership styles. Uh, so can you recast? I want this topic recast. It is researchable. Somebody else has done it up there where I say, talk about um, instructional leadership. Yeah, that sounds uh, okay. Yeah, you can talk about, by the way, you, you can even pick an, a, a construct of transformational leadership. Uh, mm -hmm. Remember, there are four constructs. You can pick just one of those. You don't have to talk about transformation or the, 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 the constructs that are there. So you could um, idealization can be can can be one of them. Uh, you can talk about supportive leadership uh, for both students and teachers. Uh, and then of course um, there is uh, the the motivational aspect of leadership, which is part of transformational leadership. Can you pick an, a strand of transformation leadership and uh, let us know how, go and study and tell us how it influences uh, the learning outcomes in a school. Okay. Right. Roda okay. Ucheng, are you there? Yes, Prof, I'm present. Yeah, Roda Ucheng. Uh, it, it is... Uh, topic. Please read it for me. It reads technology. Technology in facilitating teaching and learning for learners with hearing impairments. A case study of Wajia Special School for the Deaf Wajia County. So, why don't we say, suppose, and I, I could be wrong. Uh, maybe when you settle with your supervisors, if you say adoption of technology, right? Yes. Are you there? Yeah. If you say adoption of technology, and then you remove this adoption of technology for you remove this facilitating teaching and learning. That is implied. You remove that adoption of technology. Uh, for learners, for learners with, I don't know why these are capitalized, because learners, I don't know why, but maybe for learners with hearing impairment, right? Uh, a case study of Wajia Special Secondary School for the Deaf, Wajia County. So, a case study of Wajia Special Secondary School for the Deaf, Wajia County, Kenya. But I, you have to trim this topic. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, so, a case study of Wajia Special School for the Deaf. We have mentioned Wajia. So, we can safely trim that topic. Yeah, in Kenya. Uh, what what am I saying, Rhoda? This topic is researchable. I like such uh, uh, topics that are very sharp, and I know we are talking about adoption of technology, isn't it? Yes, Prof. Yeah, for learners with hearing impairment. So it is researchable. And uh, but now you have to read around this okay. adoption of technology for learners with hearing impairment universally. You have to read a lot before you go into that case in into that school. Okay. Paula Mata, are you there? Yes, Professor. Yes. Um I I I did this to your topic. Uh, beyond accessibility ramps, I did this. I removed that, uh, and uh, and you you can bring it back if you want. But just appraising the lived experiences of mobility impaired students in selected Kenyan private schools, then all these things will come in. You know the ramps. The uh, 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 the toilets, the the learning gadgets in the in the in the institutions, and all that you'll have so much to say. Uh, so and you can talk about ramps inside. It will come. You get it. Thank you. For mobility impaired. Otherwise, again, a, a wonderful area to look at, a live area where we can really get something. And I have a lot of materials, by the way, around uh, uh, disability and adoption, so we can pick it up there. Uh, Vivian? Uh, yes, Prof. Uh, yeah, Vivian, yes. Uh, you cannot measure understanding. I don't know. How would you measure understanding? So uh, don't, don't, don't act bright. Eh? Vivian. Yeah. Yeah, so yes. I don't try to be clever that you can understand. You can know whether I've understood. So determinants. You see, you just straight on go and talk to us with Vivian Kimadi. Determinant yes. Yes. Of, of girls. And I wouldn't say determinant. You have said determinants of girls academic achievement. No, just girls' mm -hmm. achievements. We are sharpening the topic, yeah? Yes, girls' sure. achievement in mathematics. Yeah? Yes. You don't have, you don't have to say academic. And then uh, exploring influential chapters and pathways to success uh, in Kajado County. What is all this? You know, all this, all this, I removed it. All that, I removed that. I just say determinants of girls' achievement in mathematics, right? Yes. Then I did this. I said, you're going to look for challenges and prospects. Do you see? Yeah. Then inside Utatombia, where this study is and so on, you are actually going to look at challenges and prospects. And I'm using prospects deliberately because I knew when I was the principal of Sunshine, there was only one school that kept on beating us in maths, and that was Precious Blood Jiruta. There are prospects, but you will tell us. 
these ones, right? Yes. Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, I'm sure you're very disappointed because you had really, really written a complicated topic, very complicated. Words. Uh, uh, not really. I, I appreciate the. Okay. Um, yes. Jen a, 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 a Shubwe. Yes, for I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, measures that can help to improve the performance in chemistry in Kibra. Kibra sub county when a fundisha chemistry. E chemistry in Yanani. Nani wana fundisha. Um schools in Kibra. Secondary schools in Kibra. Mm. So yeah. uh, uh you're you're saying measures that can help. Uh, improve the performance. So these are factors, factors okay. or determinants, right. De factors or determinants. So these measures that can help, these are factors or determinants to improve the performance in chemistry. at high schools. Are these selected high schools or is just in, in Kibra? Uh, my thinking was the working with selected high schools and the comparison. Actually, what I had in mind is Kibra has a lot of uh, uh, private schools, uh, not high-end private schools, but managed by individuals. Mm. And... Uh, and uh, the facilities in some of those schools are a bit wanting. Mm. And even uh, the availability of uh, the teaching staff, uh, the community, the learners come from, I, I feel all those uh, contribute towards the challenges of the teaching of the subject in those schools. Mm. Yeah. So, so what are these? Uh, so, so this this could be, could this be, and I could be wrong. Could this be instructional, instructional factors? Yeah. Um, my thinking was uh, there could be instructional factors, availability of facilities. But those are those uh, are the instructional factors. Yes, 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 yes it, yeah. It is all those things, eh? Yes. Inst Factors, including the teachers. Yes. Yeah. For, yes. For, um, for the improvement. I think that's better English. For the improvement. Uh, for the improvement. Okay. Isn't it? Yes. For the improvement uh, of the performance. Right? Yes. Uh, and and uh, I don't know why why chemistry, by the way. Um, <laughs> that 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 is where my heart is. <laughs> okay. Yes, that is where my heart is. Mm. So if it is selected now, you can insert it. But you remember mm -hmm. the piece of cloth I've given you is is uh, it measures thirteen watts, right? Yes. So you have to work on it, uh, Helen. Yechanga, are you there? Yes, Prof. I mean. Yeah, don't use the word investigating. All for right. now, I know why. Mm -hmm. So uh we we Helen, we we are just starting with the inference of uh again, you're talking of principal leadership styles on student achievement. So the influence of instructional leadership i can change it to school. yeah on uh, school on student achievement eh? uh, yeah. you want to do a comparative study i thought so because uh when i was reading some a, a journal that was giving me some insights about mm. Mm? about uh, school leadership and students and um uh, uh, I was yeah, I was reading a journal that gave me some insights. Yes. 
No, uh, there's a reason why I'm really telling you not to go for a comparative study at this le at this level. Okay. And uh, why don't you say instead of a comparative, I wrote here this and think about it. Critical attributes. Okay. Yes. Think about it. Okay. Critical at attributes, and we are talking about the principles of leadership. Elizabeth Muthoni. Yes. Elizabeth Muthoni, uh, exploring our channel Nayo for now. Uh, the psychological effects of bed waiting. Uh, this one, Carol will supervise you. So she'll see what <laughs> <it. How does? laughs> the psychological effects of bed waiting. Among school going, so so this is is this in leadership? Is this in uh, policy? I'm just wondering. Remember, your degree. When someone looks at your thesis title in your transcript, must must look leadership, must look a policy. I, but. Please explain to me, Elizabeth. What what what's your point of uh, uh, distress, or what excites you about this? Okay, actually, hmm. are you there? Actually, and again, of oh, sorry, can you uh -huh. hear me? My network is on and off. You went what off. Hmm? Elizabeth. Hello. Yes. You're Can not you hear me? Elizabeth. Sorry, my network is on and off. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Elizabeth. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Go ahead. Mm. Has been happy on the Elizabeth, do you want to? Can you hear us? Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit. No, she's probably. We'll pick you it can up. come in once she stabilizes. We'll pick it up with her. Once she stabilizes, she can come. Maybe Chris can okay. start. Okay, Chris Wakesa. Are yes. You there? Yes, I am here, Prof. Yeah, an assessment not of the job, an assessment of job satisfaction. Yeah? Yes. And you don't say levels because uh, that's what you're going to assess. Yeah? Yes. Among uh, junior police officers within Impakasi East Subcounty. So you think these senior police officers are satisfied? Work on a for us, Yes, yes. Okay. From, from experience and having been one. Okay, Wako Sawa. Wako Sawa. Uh, I saw an assessment of jo job satisfaction among, you know, within, not within Impakasi. I don't know. You know what are among junior and among among junior officers within the police force. Yeah? Yes, sir. Within the police force. Police service is pro <laughs> it's a force, but you keep cheating as it is a service. <laughs> Within the police service in Kenya, yeah, yes. Please do this and then let us scope. I'm trying to uh, maybe uh, tomorrow I'll try to explain why it is very important to, for you to be universal in your top topic writing. Otherwise, this becomes uh, a village study. And uh, 
you might not get the citations we want you to get. Yes, prof. But if you if you if you highlight police service, uh, your work would just come out in yes, Kenya. Yes, prof. Yeah. So please uh, look look at prof, that. Think um, about it. Yes, prof. And, and, uh, and by the way, there's nothing wrong, but I just do not want. I don't want the demographic uh, to be that type. One time we had a graduation in Moi, and uh, all our PhD students were talking about the various sub counties and sub what, and the guest of honor was so upset. It was the president, Uru Kenyatta. Yeah, and you see, you might say he didn't understand uh, these things of delimitation and scoping, but you see, that's what when you are reading your title, that's what will come. Okay, so this is researchable. Thank you, Prof. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I had uh, Prof. Just before you move to the next person, I had two topics. Though the, the the second one, I I submitted it a little bit late, but maybe if you allow me one minute to just say it here. So no, then you can do okay. if yes, you send yes. it. Have you sent it to us? Yes, yes, I've already sent it. Uh, tomorrow we'll meet it because these are only 32. Tomorrow okay. I'll be doing the rest of the 20. But tomorrow, before before or after this, what I'm doing, I yes. want to to review uh assumptions, uh delimitations and limitations and the rationale of the study, because I, I want us to, to be sure on how we're going to package our chapter one. And then, God willing, I want to talk a little bit about the literature review, because after this, you're going to chapter two. Okay, thank you. Gatere. Gatere, you're uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I remove this, a comparative analysis of uh, we will see it. This is child protection and safeguarding policies. Yes? Yes. Uh, policies. And uh, I, I was very ruthless with you. Uh, policies. And I said, these are policies like this. I said, policies across. Uh, and I removed all this. across Kilifi County. And then I removed this and exploring potential enhancement. I don't know what you're saying. Do you see child protection and safeguarding policies across Kilifi County? Uh, you can say in the People's Republic of Kenya, or just say Kenya. And then all these things you have said, uh, Gatere will will find them. You see, took on a chapter, took on a chapter one, where we're going to do the delimitation and limitation. Now took on a chapter two, where you're going to tell us all these things about child protection and safeguarding policies, right? Yes. But I was happy when I saw that. I said, "Yeah, oh yeah, this is this is this will be a contribution." Daysta can also make. Zipora Jeb Kemboy. Are you there? Yes, Prof. I can't hear you. Hello. Yes. Uh, you're so down. Uh, what? I didn't understand this topic, Zipora. I, I, I'm just, I just parental and academic performance of high school students in Kenya. And I asked myself, what about the parents? What are you saying? Uh, and and uh, this is what I gave an example. Is she talking about the relationship between parental education level and learning achievements? Can we assume that she was she meant parental involvement? Or, or is it now involvement in which sense? 
parental involvement and academic about, performance. Yes. Yeah. I Help was talking me understand. about. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Parental. I was talking about parental involvement in the mm. academic performance. Mm. Parental involvement in the academic performance of the high school students in Kenya. A case study, Tarbo Sub County. Mm. Wow. It is so broad. Parental involvement. I was talking about the relationship. Mm. Yeah, it's a relationship between. Yeah. Yeah, and academic. Is it academic performance or academic? Academic performance. Mm. Parents, when parents are involved, how are you going to tie that to academic performance? I, I, I thought it's, it's, it's the totality. So according to my understanding is that the parents who are always involved about their academic performance of their students, you realize that the students whose parents mm. are committed will always excel in their academic performance. And like those so students- what, so, what, so why are you doing the study? So I'm doing the study majorly because uh, having been taught as a teacher, I've realized that in my region, most of our parents are not committed in terms of material support. Some of the parents do not even uh, support their students in terms of psychological. So you realize that in us in high school, in this in high school, some students have a lot of challenges, but their parents are not willing or they are not ready to help them in their psychological development. Mm -hmm. You are going into other things. Eh? Or what do you mean? I don't get it. Yeah, I'm saying mm -hmm. uh, the parents are not, some parents are not supportive in terms of, some are not even communicating to their children. They cannot talk to them. They cannot advise them. Then apart from that, some are not supporting them in terms of material support, like school fees. Then apart from that, some are not ready. When it comes to education, like education days, visiting days, they are not available. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wow, this is a very, I don't know that you're getting me as I wonder. There are so many things you are chasing in this study it's as if you, you don't know the other Kenyans who would want to study and get a master's. Huh? Hmm? I don't know. What am I saying? Can somebody help me? The relationship of uh, level, the relationship of level of parental involvement and um, what is academic performance? Getting an A. Huh? Is it is it and I, I'm just wondering as a, as a, your lecturer are we going out in the field to look at the level the the relationship between I think between uh prof excuse me prof yes go on I've seen you can you talk about learning outcomes, parental involvement and learning outcomes? Maybe so that we able outcome. to see, to look at uh, how the uh, involvement of parents help to uh, achieve our learning outcomes from high school students, something like that. Mm. Instead of performance, perform academic performance, it limits us so much. Maybe don't mm. talk about learning outcomes because talk about things like assignments, exams, like that. Yes. Yeah. 
So Zibora, we are we are we are agonizing on this because we want to get a topic. Yeah? Yeah. The relationship between level of parental involvement and learning outcomes. And you're going to you're not going to say you have seen. No, no, no. Huh? But uh, I don't know uh, what we are looking for. So the relation between learning outcomes. It's, it's the involvement of parents that's affecting the learning outcomes, Prof. Mm. They're not learning outcomes affecting the parental involvement. So that... I think her mind was that when parents are involved in in the work of the students, they they are able to become better students. They are able to to show better understanding of whatever they are learning in school. So that when you, when you do the learning outcomes, it becomes more broader than just a, a tying it down just to a, an exam. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my, my I'm trying to to think aloud what she's trying to, to say, a Prof. Yeah, the relationship between learning outcomes and uh level of parental involvement or or was to that effect uh and i i i be very careful about a case of terrible sub county because i don't know what your unit of analysis would be i'm worried what would be a unit of analysis is it the county or the school. And I, I'm not looking for answers, Sipora, but I just want you to note that I'm a little worried. And uh, when you get to your supervisor, you, you'll have to discuss that a little more. Uh, Anne. Yes, bro. Yeah, Anne, I... I, I one of the things that is number 20 it's on, on my list number 27 and one of the things uh, that delighted me is when i saw your topic uh, okay. and the only thing i i can say is teachers pass pass uh, perspectives mm -hmm. on the impact so don't don't go here. Don't go here. Uh, remove that, right? On the impact. That. On the impact of the Tusome reading program in okay. upper primary grades in Kenya. This was a national rollout. Yes, it is. And this one, uh, I will supervise you. Okay. Yeah. Thank because you. Because I, I did. I did. An evaluation of the Tusome program, so I know. Oh wow! Yeah, I was very, I was very happy when I saw this come out. Thank you. For um, yeah, so, so I, you get my comments, everybody, on your background and your problem and your purpose and your objectives. Maureen Gunjiri. Yes. Yeah, leadership styles. Again, we have talked about it. I think I don't want to be labor. Yeah. Yes. Leadership styles. Can we can we uh, narrow it down? Yeah. Yes. Yes. In primary schools and the effect on teacher effectiveness in junior secondary schools, a very good area of study. All right. Yes. Yeah, very good. Uh, Joel Nwita, uh uh, where is this number twenty nine? Madoni, that's one number twenty nine. Joel, uh, exploring. Uh, please let's leave this out. I am I'm very nervous, and if you have been in my class for research, you will know why I'm nervous. Exploring is about research, but uh, exploratory is about qualitative, and I'm not sure at this stage whether we know where we are going. So uh, I removed that. Joel, are you there? 
Yes, yeah, so I'm there, prof. I just can't see your screen, but I'm there. You can't see my screen. Why? Am I? No, I can only see number twenty-seven. Yeah. Uh, is anybody seeing number twenty-nine? Yes, I can see. I yes, can see. yes, yes, yes. So it is policy struggle. I don't like the word struggles. Okay. I've said remove the word struggles and say policy challenges. Yeah. Okay. Policy challenges in the implementation. Uh, do we want to use performance contracting? No. I, I why don't we put there TPAD? Uh because prof. Are you signing are you signing performance contracts? What's what's happening? Mm. Uh at, at the at the county at the county government level, mm. we don't have TIPA. TIPA is in secondary schools. So there is there's the performance contracting strategy, mm. which is applied in in government institutions and also in county government level. And 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 so the county government has uh, a performance contract with all in, the, in the county. Okay. Yes, at the county level. Yes. Okay. Okay. The challenges in the implementation. Yes, and that that is okay. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, nya, nya Bere, Samuel, are you there? Excuse me, Prof. Yes. You said you you uh. You are a little jittery with the word exploring. Which uh, which word did you suggest? I removed it. Okay. I've just said policy challenges. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Nyabere, uh, are you there? I'm here, Prof. Yeah. Leadership succession planning. I just removed all that because that will come there. Uh, examining, so this thesis will be examining how institutions of higher learning in Kenya approach succession planning. And the other things you had talked about will be the constructs around which you build your literature. So, and, and, and uh, this is what I was saying. When I looked at this, you know, this is a very beautiful thing. And Kenyans keep on saying we have signed performance contracts. Examining how institutions of higher learning in Kenya approach succession planning, for example. Uh, do we really do succession planning? So I want you to add there to be pro provocative uh, myth and reality. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what you you do succession planning, uh, but uh, if people want to interfere there, it just it, it turns out to be a, a myth and a reality. But very nice area researchable. Esther Tiano, yes. Are you sorry. there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, this. Analyzing Kenya's 2023 Finance Bill or Act. Please scope it. Okay. Assessing the effects of VAT and excise duty policy amendments on imports in Kenya. I, I, I like that. And we shall, in our background to the problem, we shall talk about the Kenya 2023 Finance Act. Yeah? yeah. And finally, Obadia, exploring career decision making among high school graduates. I like that. But uh, understanding. Remove that. Obadia, are you there? Yes, Prof. Yeah, but before you go, Otieno, uh, Otieno, can you tell me what what is it that you want to bring out? 
in my line of work, actually, I'm a tax collector. I can't hear so, you. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Um, I've realized that a lot of studies have been done about the the finance bill, mm. but they are prior to when the finance bill came in before it came before yeah. it took effect. Mm. So now I want to do a study after it has taken effect for the last six months mm. to see if it it aimed to achieve what the government wanted, the revenue maximization and yeah. also economic growth. Yeah, this is excellent. I, I loved seeing that topic. Uh, finally, uh, Obadiah, um, exploring career decision making among high school graduates. Where is this? Uh, that is uh, in the Republic Democratic of Congo, the Eastern region. Okay, in Kivu. Yes. Okay. Uh, why don't we, I want to persuade you to remove this and just say influencing factors. Because th what you have put there is uh, definitely one of those influencing, the decision-making process. Yeah? Okay. So, so it is researchable but what are the influencing factors? And now you have uh, the latitude. I was I was going to ask you whether this is a qualitative or quantitative study. Or uh, I want to do by the grace of God mixed method. Mm. So, so I you, think uh, you, both you of want, them will be captured. Yeah. So what do you want to do here? Why don't you use the word uh, investigating? Beautiful. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know it has been tedious, but uh, there's no other way you help students to sharpen their topics. You've got to go through this. I am very thankful to the faculty who will be some of your supervisors that are online. Tomorrow, I hope to get the other remaining. I had only 32, so I hope to get the other remaining almost 20 or thereabout. But before that, I want to go through limitations and delimitations. I, I want us to be very clear. I want us to go through assumptions because that's, that is going to constitute part of your chapter one. And then... I, I want to tell you how you would how you would package your literature review in chapter two, and now uh, I hand over this to the director of uh, the program, uh, Dr. Mwaka, uh, and ask her to allow me to finish with the, the other twenty, and now you can you can divide these students into. Uh, with the various supervisors. I am hoping that uh, we will shepherd them, we will continue to shepherd them uh, to reach our intended date of graduation. But as the students should realize how much we are putting in so that they also build. By the way, I am extremely happy with the work I've, I've read. Uh, and even when you didn't do the right thing, I'm very happy that you have tried something. That means you are halfway, you are almost, no, you are a third way of your chapter one. And now I want you to firmly hold your topic. And now we get you the literature, go to our library, go to the supervisors you'll be given, and let us tear away. Tear, T E A R, so that uh, we then move up, all of us move from chapter one to chapter two to chapter three, and then we schedule your defenses. Dr. Mwaka. Are you there? 
she seems to have fallen off. I think she left. Okay. So tomorrow, listen very know. carefully. Hey, listen carefully. Tafadali to answer Sakum Namoja. Sharp. Okay. Yeah, and I sorted to a darasa on time. I hope you have found this useful. You have uh, not just for your own topic, but as you as you see what we are doing with the others, you are feeling encouraged and knowing that we can get this thing going. Thank you very much. Mark over twelve. Mm -hmm. And bye. Okay, bye bye. Dr. Mwaka, are you there? Okay, bye bye. Uh, see you tomorrow. Talk with your card. Hello everyone. Uh, before we before we leave, I uh, would wish to remind every and each one of us of the conversation that we had yesterday and the plan that we said that we should achieve. For that purpose, uh, I'm creating a group right now. I will send uh, uh, the link in the, in one of our our main uh, main forums. That was directed by Professor uh, 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 Dr. Yuya. I will send the group, then we will join, then we will have uh, uh, some discussion on uh, maybe what we should uh, what we should procure for the gift, and also when uh, the the date that will be suitable for each one of us. God bless you. Okay, sir. Someone wants to read.